So this is how I like to set up my trolley for my eyebrow laminations. I like to have everything out and ready and easy to grab, especially when we're working with our lifting lotions and we have such finicky processing times, I don't wanna to have to be digging around for anything. So I like to have everything out and ready for me to use. So I have my biodegradable cling wrap. I like to have two uh, unrolled pieces ready for me to grab. I don't like to use the same one at uh, both steps because I don't wanna have the number one lifting lotion um, touching the number two. So I have two clean strips here. I have my ring light from my before and afters, some cotton rounds, a fresh bowl of water. I have my oil-free cleanser, my lifting lotions, and then I have all my tools set up here. All the tools that I would be touching the client with and their skin, I like to kind of keep it separate from all of my products to avoid cross-contamination. And then I have my after sort of retail products that I can talk to my client about my highlighter and my brow soap. So I also have my henna stuff out because I like to kind of upsell my lamination clients with a henna treatment afterwards. Um, so I just have that out and ready to go so I don't have to dig around for it. And then I also have my drawer of um, Q-tips here, just easy, out, ready to grab. Alrighty, let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I'm first gonna give her eyebrows a cleanse with our oil-free cleanser. So I grab my cotton rounds, and we just wanna remove any excess oils, any makeup, anything that would be left on the skin, just so that we can make sure there's no barriers between the lotions and the eyebrows. So today we're gonna do our no glue technique, which is a lot faster and you just get way better results. Plus you can get this done within 15 minutes. So now that we're cleansed, I'm gonna go over one more time with my exfoliating brush. And I'm just gonna give a gentle circular motion massage here on her eyebrows. This is gonna get off any dead skin that may uh, interfere with our lotions. So I'm just gonna take my cotton round with a little bit of water and I'm just gonna wipe away the excess cleanser. Make sure it's all nice and clean. At this point, we wanna assess the brows and make sure that they're healthy enough to do the brow lamination. If you find that the eyebrow hairs look very weak um, and there's not a lot of them, it might be better to suggest a henna treatment. Um, if you find that their hairs are all pointed down and they're very stiff and stubborn, then you wanna assess the time to be around four to five minutes. So you wanna really keep an eye on the eyebrows when you're doing the brow lamination. So I'm gonna just jump right in there with my number one lotion. What I like to do is I put two pumps per eyebrow. So I put four pumps on my hand. I get my timer ready. I'm gonna set it for five minutes. And I'm just gonna scoop the lotion up with my spoolie and put the product right there and just go right over the brow. You don't need to worry too much about the placement of the brows at this point. We will kind of go through it at the halfway mark and do it then. And if you need extra, I just kind of take the spoolie really hard and twist it and it gives you a little bit of extra product. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the other brow. And 
And then we're going to set our timer for five minutes. So we're gonna click start. I'm gonna take my cling film. And you're just gonna kind of press down and pull up slightly just to make sure that it's all nice and flat and in that area. And again, you don't have to worry too much about these spots here because we're gonna go through halfway through and comb that out with our Y comb. But I just wanna take a second to talk about our cling wrap. We've got a biodegradable cling wrap. I think it's the first on the market. Um, we're very passionate about the environment at Be Pampered. So it was very important for me to create this product. This is why we didn't have a cling wrap before because it took a little while because we are the first in the market. Um, so there's so much in here. I think there's 200 meters in here. So this is gonna last you a really, really long time. Um, I like to have my cling wrap out on the tray first so that I'm not fumbling with it while I've got their lotions on. So when your timer has hit the halfway mark, we're gonna take our Y comb and we're just gonna go through and brush the hairs into place. So now the hairs are more pliable because the lotion's been sitting on them. And we're gonna take the Y comb and make sure that all the little hairs underneath are all pointing in the same direction. And at this point you can kind of assess their brows, like how much longer do we need? Is the remaining two and a half minutes okay for her or should we leave it on a little bit longer? If you're finding that there's still some that are stuck, st sticking straight up and they're not laying down, you might wanna leave it on for about another, literally 10 to 15 seconds. So I'm gonna just apply that back down and then we'll do this one. This is the fun part for me because you just get to put them wherever you want them to go. So her hair is pretty much going where we want it to go and it's staying still. So I think we're gonna stick with our five minute time. Okay, so her time is up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw the cling wrap away because I don't wanna use it on the next step. And I'm gonna take my silicone brush and just in an upward motion, just remove all the excess lotion. So we're just gonna go through. And then I'm gonna take a wet Q-tip and we wanna stop the activation of the lotion. So we're gonna go through and make sure that it's all done with because we don't wanna over process the brow hairs. It's very easily done and we know we're done. So I'm just gonna go right through there. And then same with the other brow, we'll take all that lotion and I like to just kind of keep going in an upward motion it's important when you're doing the brow lamination to go in a more natural shape. You don't wanna be pulling them directly up when you're doing them because they just look like crazy brows. You wanna kinda of have a slight curve so that they're going in the direction that they're made to go in. So a wet Q-tip to stop any activation. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to the dry side of the Q-tip and just go quickly over just to get off any excess water, any excess moisture that's on there before we apply our second lotion. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna repeat the step exactly how we did with number one. So we're gonna take our number two lotion, two pumps per brow on the back of your hand We're gonna take our spoolie, we're gonna make sure it's clean of all the number one lotion. So what I like to do is just grab a Kleenex, kind of twist and pull, and it makes sure that all that extra lotion is off. And then you can actually even dip it in the water 
and do that again. So I'm gonna take our number two lotion, same as before, apply it to the brow. And again, we don't wanna bring the brows straight up like this. We want it to be in a nice curved position. And then the other brow. I'm gonna set my timer for five minutes. Sometimes when I've gotten a little crazy with the lotions, I'll just take a Q-tip to get any excess that's not even touching the brow just so that it's not sitting on her skin. And then we're gonna take a new clean cling wrap. And same as before, we're going to press down and pull up a little bit. Okay, so now that we're halfway through our timing, we're gonna do the same as we did with our step number one. And we're just gonna take our Y comb, make sure all that product is evenly throughout the brows and just brush them into place and then reapply our cling wrap. And then we'll just leave them to sit until their processing time is done. Okay, so our five minutes is up. So I'm gonna remove the cling wrap. And again, pulling in an upward motion any excess lotion that's left on the brows and then go and deactivate it with water and a Q-tip. So the water is really important at this step. I get a lot of questions on why you use water and you don't use water in your aftercare. Um, it's because we're only doing it once and we're still in the processing stage. If the client goes home and they start using hot water and steam, it's just gonna relax the perm and it's just gonna make them go back to normal. So we always advise no hot water, no steam for 24 hours. And then just be aware of the placement of the brows. We wanna kinda of keep them in the upward motion. And so now I'm going to show you how to perform a henna treatment over your eyebrow lamination. So it's a little bit different than just a straight henna bee service. We want to take into consideration that her brows have been through a chemical process. So A, we're not going to be using as dark of a color and B, we're not going to be leaving it on for as long as we normally would because everything is open. So everything's going to process a little bit faster. So Normally on my client, I would do um, five mixed with a little bit of four, but because we've already done our lamination, I'm going to just mix the number four to keep it a little bit lighter. So you can either dump it into the upside down dish, or you can take your little spoon and you wanna get about a pea size, you don't need very much. And if you're mixing two colors together, you wanna make sure that you're mixing them really well so that you're not being uh, inconsistent when it's applied to the eyebrow. And then we're gonna take some hot water. So we're just gonna mix it up as we normally would, three or four drops. We'll take our henna brush and we're really looking for that honey consistency. We don't want it to be too dry or too runny or it's just not gonna work as well. 
So when you're doing the henna over a lamination, you're not going to be getting the skin stain that you normally would with just the straight henna treatment. We've already kind of put some chemicals on the skin. There's a little bit of a barrier there. And plus we're not gonna be leaving the henna on as long. So you're just gonna be tinting really the hairs during the, henna, during the lamination, not the skin. So they're completely different looks. If you feel like your client wants something that's a little bit more filled in, um, a little bit more dense, then I would suggest just doing the henna treatment. If you're wanting somebody who wants to try out more of like a microbladed look um, or where they see those individual hairs, then I would recommend the lamination and the henna together. So if you see when I pull back, it's not really going back fast enough. It's not really pulling back. It's a little bit too dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add another drop. Grab all the henna from around the edges. I'm being kind of messy today, guys. Okay. So now when I pull it, it kind of goes right back into place. It's more of that creamy honey consistency that we're looking for. We're ready to tint. Okay, so again, we're not really looking for that skin stain after the lamination. We're just looking to tint those brow hairs. So you don't have to be super careful about your placement. Obviously you don't want it to be all over the place, but you just kind of want to apply the henna over the hairs and then just give it a quick little cleanup with a damp Q-tip. And when we think about our processing time, if we were to do just the henna treatment on my client, I would leave it on for about 15 to 20 minutes. Again, because we've already done the chemical process and everything, we're only gonna leave it on for about five to 10 minutes. So we're gonna cut that time down quite a bit. And again, it's just gonna stain the hairs. It's not going to stain the skin as much as you want. You might get a little bit of a stain, but it's not gonna last more than a day or so. So we'll just clean up the area and then I'm gonna set my timer for five minutes and then I'll take the middle part off and then we'll assess the rest if it needs to come off or not. Okay, so our five minutes is up. I'm gonna take a little bit of water and I'm just going to remove about half an inch off the middle of the brow. And at this point you can see how dark your eyebrows have gotten. So if you have somebody who has lighter eyebrows, you'll probably notice a significant change. And you can decide, do I want to take it all off now or do I want to leave it on for another few minutes? So with her, I'm going to leave it on for another few minutes because it's not getting too dark. And I'm just going to apply a little bit more henna, just kind of make my transition so it's not so stark. And we're just gonna leave it on for, I'm gonna go with another four minutes. Okay, so our timer just went off again. So I'm gonna take a Q-tip with some water because our henna has dried a little bit and I don't wanna be really rubbing at her skin and tugging at her skin. So I'm just gonna re-wet the henna a little bit And then I'm gonna take my cotton round and it should just slide off really nicely. So I'll take my spoolie just to get off any little pieces that are underneath there. And I'll do the same to the other side. So I'll just dampen it a little bit Loosen it up. I'll go in with my cotton round and it should just slide off really nicely. 
If you find you're taking it off and it's not coming off, just re-wet it a little bit more with the Q-tip. Okay, so before I put her nourishing lotion on, I'm going to do a brow wax. My one advice with the brow wax after the lamination is you wanna use a hard wax. A soft wax is gonna adhere itself to the skin and because we've just put it through a lamination, it's gonna compromise the skin a little bit, make it a little bit more sensitive. Um, whereas a hard wax, it's going to just adhere to the hair. So it's going to be a lot better for the client's skin. It will require a little bit more tweezing, but it is safer for your client and for you. So I'm just going to go in with our hard wax here. And just kind of clean up. I don't want to take too much off. So what I like to do is brush the hairs down and just go along the top of the line to get off any peach fuzz, any little tiny hairs that are out of place. But I'm not really touching the big long hairs because we've pushed them down. Okay, so once it's all dry, I'm gonna make myself a little tab and just do a nice slow tear. When you're working with hard wax, I find it's it works better when you're not ripping it as fast as you can. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of my antiseptic and wipe around the area and get off any wax that was left behind. I'm gonna brush her hairs back up into place. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm gonna finish her off with our brow highlighter just to kind of give her a little bit more definition. And then I'm actually going to throw in a little bit of a brow pencil just in a couple spots. This is a great opportunity to talk to your clients about the retail, um, how they can at, at home do their eyebrows so they look this good. Maybe not this good. So you still want them to come see you. So I'm going to take a little bit of our brow highlighter on the back of our brush, put a little bit of the product on the back of my hand so we're not getting any cross contamination. And then I'm just taking my highlighter brush and pulling a little bit of that product down evenly just to get it a little bit of it on the brush. You don't need very much at all. And if you have darker skin, you don't, you just need it to be a little bit more transparent. If you have somebody who has really pale skin, then you can use a little bit more product. So you just want to kind of create your line of your shape of your brow, just really lightly. And 
And then I like to just kind of pull the product down. And then this kind of covers up any redness that's left on the skin so your client can go out afterwards, go back to work or whatever without feeling like they just had a fresh wax. And then I just like to use my finger to just kind of blend, blend that there. So some of our great retail products that we have available are our brow soap, our brow highlighter, our brow pencils. We have them all in six colors that match our henna colors, which are make it really easy for you to uh, recommend the right color for your client. Uh, we also have our serum infused mascara, which is brilliant. I love it. So it's not only lengthening your lashes when you apply it. It's also nourishing them and lengthening them over time. We also have our brow and lash serum. So they're all great kind of products that work really well with our services. So you can talk to your clients um, as you're doing their service and hopefully they'll walk out with one of the products. So I'm gonna take my number four brow pencil and I'm just gonna talk to my client about the one little area that I see that she'll probably want to fill in on her own. So just underneath here, just a little bald spot again, because we didn't do the henna on its own, it's not really gonna stain the skin. So we'll just need a little extra help there and a little extra help here. So now we're gonna just apply our nourishing lotion. So after you do the henna, you wanna make sure that we're locking in all that moisture. So about one pump per brow. We're just gonna take our mascara wand and just gently apply it to the brow area. And then just tell the client to leave it on. It's gonna harden a little bit, but that's good because we wanna keep those laminated eyebrows in place for the next little while. And then at this point too, you also wanna tell your client about the aftercare steps. So there's no hot water, no steam for 24 hours. And just be aware of the placement of the eyebrows. So I usually talk to my clients about styling their eyebrows. I have them nice and fluffy and Instagrammable, but not all the time do my clients want to be walking around in the superstore with big, crazy eyebrows. So I advise them to leave them up for the next day or two, just so that they can set. Um, and then after that, they can kind of brush them whichever way they want. It kind of, the lamination makes them a little bit more pliable, I'd say. So after a couple of days, you can kind of, you know, brush them off to the side so they're not so up and crazy, but for sure do them up and crazy for your Instagram shot because they're key. So that's how you perform henna after a brow lamination. I can't wait to see your results on Instagram. Please tag us. And if you have any questions, please email me at hello at bepampered.ca.